Hey guys, so this video is going to focus on how to find the value of x. As we can see here, the examples that we're going to be working on today deal with triangles here. So we're going to do a little bit of geometry. So typically when you're asked to find the value of x in a triangle, pay attention to where your x values are. Are we talking about angles? Are we talking about the sides of the triangle? What specifically are we trying to find here? Now, if I take a look at example A, let's go ahead and start with that there. Uh, there's a couple of markings that we have here. So first, I see that my 4x is for this line right over here as part of the triangle. The only other number I'm given is that this long side over here is 64. Now, remember when it comes to markings on triangles, uh, remember these tick marks over here? If you have two of the same tick marks, that means that those sides are the same. So this segment over here is the same as this one, right? So that means that these two distances are the same. And then I see I have these two tick marks here that correlate with these here. So that means that these two sides are also the same. So what that actually tells me about this problem um, I'm obviously not solving for the sides of the triangle. I know one side is 64, but I have no idea what's going on with these two other sides here. So that's not what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the value of x for this line over here. And the only way that I can think of to actually do that is there's a theorem called the triangle mid-segment uh, mid theorem that says that if you have a segment within a triangle here, that it actually creates um, a halfway point of the side. So you can see that this line right here, it separates these two sides and makes them equal. On this top side over here, it does the same thing. Where it cuts right here, it cuts this side directly in half to where this side is the same as this side. And because that does that, I know that that line is a mid-segment. Again, just because it splits these two sides over here evenly. Now, what the triangle mid-segment theorem actually tells us that we can do is it says that the mid-segment piece, so this line right here where the 4x is exactly half of the base of the triangle, this longer side over here, 64. So this little line right over here is half of this bigger line here. That's what the theorem says. So that means that 4x is half of 64 is what the theorem says. So whatever the smaller side is, you're going to take that, set it equal to half of the longer side. So what that's going to look like, start with your mid-segment, uh, which is 4x, and that is going to equal to one half of the longer side, and the longer side is 64. So that gives me an equation of 4x is equal to half of the base. So half of 64 is how you set up the equation. So on the left side of your equation, make sure that you put your mid-segment, and that's going to equal to half, and then you're multiplying that by your long segment over here is the way that those equations are set up. So otherwise, we just need to calculate, we need to solve this equation here. So we are solving for x. So the first thing we need to do is do a little bit of cleanup on the right-hand side of the equation. So the right-hand side of the equation gives us 1 half of 64. Keep in mind that that is 1 half times 64. So if you take half of 64, literally chop it in half. If I chop in half 64, I get 32. All right, so half of 64 is 32, so I'm left with the equation 4x is equal to 32. We solve that equation for x, keeping in mind that this is 4 times x. The opposite of multiplication is division, so in order to get rid of this 4, we do need to divide by it, as long as we remember to do it to both sides. That will cancel the 4 on the left, leaving us with x is equal to, well, 32 divided by 4 is 8. So that means that x is equal to 8 for this particular example. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the same exact thing for example b. Now example b has a little bit more going on, it looks like. So let's see here. Here's our x that we're trying to solve. 
Um, I am given that this line right here is 17, and this line here is a mid-segment. We can see where it connects here. These two sides here have the same tip marks, so that means that this side is the same as this side. And if we run it down to the bottom here, it splits this side in half because we see these two tick marks there. Um, but, um, unfortunately, uh, this 17 here, so remember that uh, that mid-segment is half of the base. So this mid-segment here is 17. Its base that runs parallel with it would be this one here. But we're not given information about this one here. We have no idea what this long side is. But if we take a look at this here, and I just realized I forgot to add uh, these tick marks here on this side here. These two sides are also the same. So what we're going to do here, because the 17 is not going to help us out because this mid-segment correlates to this one here, but we have no idea what that side is. We also see that we have this little line over here that is a 30. So this 30 here, let's take a look at what that one's doing. So at the bottom side of that segment here, it hits the same uh, side over here of this triangle that it splits it in half evenly here. Uh, if we follow it up here to this side of the triangle, that also splits these two sides in half. So that means 30 is also a mid-segment. So 17 is a mid-segment, 30 is a mid-segment, okay? So you could either use 17 along with this longer side, or you can use 30 along with this side over here. Again, remember that the mid-segment is parallel to the base. So two parallel lines run perfectly side by side. So it's either 17 in this long one, or it's 30 in this long one over here. The main thing that we need to worry about as long as that we have enough given information about the problem where we can actually create an equation to solve. So as I mentioned earlier, we can't use 17 because we're not given any information about this side here, but we can use 30 because we are given that this side over here is X. So what we're going to do is we're going to use 30 and we're going to use this side over here. All right, 30 is the mid-segment of this uh, line over here. So remember, on the left side of your equation, it's your mid-segment, that's equal to 30. And then you're going to set your equation equal to half of the longer. So 30 is one half of the base, and the base here is x, right? So 30 is equal to one half x is how we set up that equation. So this is what we're going to solve. So we need to solve this equation for x. So that means the only thing we need to do is get rid of the 1 half. So there's a couple of different ways that you can look at this. There is a rule uh, in algebra that says that if you are multiplying by a fraction here in front, so we have 1 half times x, the way that we get rid of multiplication is typically to divide. Uh, but dividing by fractions kind of gives us a couple of extra steps. There's a rule that helps us out with that. The rule is, um, I, I don't know the technical term for it, but the rule, what the rule says is if you have a fraction as a coefficient like we have here, what you want to do is take the reciprocal of that fraction, flip it around. So if I take 1 half and flip that fraction around, I get 2 over 1. So what the rule says is to flip that fraction around and multiply both sides of the equation by it. So if I flip around 1 half, I get 2 over 1. Multiply both sides of the equation by 2 over 1, and that's going to solve it for us. Now on the right hand side, uh, so I know these fractions aren't side by side, you can still multiply them like they are. But keep in mind that if we have the same thing in the numerator as we have in the denominator, they cancel out. So this one up top cancels with this one down the bottom, and this two up here cancels with this two here. So right, one half of two, half of two is one. So one x is just the same thing as x. That cancels out on the right hand side, which is why we multiply by the reciprocal, because it gets rid of the fraction. On the left hand side, we had 30. We're just gonna multiply that by two. So 30 times two gives us 60. 
So that just tells us that x is equal to 60 for this particular example, which makes sense if our mid-segment is 30 and that's half of this side. This side over here is just x. So if that's half, that means then this is going to be double it essentially, right? So x is equal to 60 for this longer side here. So again, we just need to remember the mid-segment theorem. Remember the mid-segment is one half of the longer side that is parallel to your base. Set up that equation and solve. Otherwise, that's it for this video.